It's Friday. It's 12 noon. It's, oh, I'm not here this week. <laughs> hey, everybody. Have a great Halloween weekend. It's Festool Friday. It's Festool Live. We have had a great year so far. It's time for a little bit of vacation. So tune in next week. We'll be live again. But Chris has put together a fantastic best of series for you. So continue to watch. There's a lot of great tips and tricks in there. When I take this off, I want to show you this two pieces. This is your crown stop. Okay, but the way the crown stop, you'll see in a few minutes, mounts to, and I'm going to lift this up, Chris. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm in your way. Mounts to your extension. There's two nuts that go into these T's right here and two different knobs or screws, okay? But what I didn't realize, and I didn't study the schematic right away, and I want to make sure you see this, okay, is this pencil. <laughs> see it? We got to zoom in on that. Okay, what you need to do is you need to take these four nuts and bolts off, but what you should always do is make a mark right here to where you can put your leg and bracket back on once you slide those two nuts to lock the stop in. Okay, I'm not going to cover anything else because for me, that was the eye opener when I set it up on the other side. <laughs> I didn't make a mark and I had to fiddle faddle because I had my extensions dialed in perfect. And I'm going to set it right up here on the capex. Now, the beauty of this is see the V that goes right in there? This, Chris, can we come in so we can see this? See this right here? It locks right in just like that underneath and it's super stable. Now, also, you got to remember here that when you set this up, okay, I never align this with this, especially when you're cutting long moldings. I think I covered that in the Capex uh, Essentials one we did on Festool Live because if you have a crown in your molding, not crown molding, but a crown in your molding, this part over here, if it's perfectly in line in here, will give you a sprung cut. You don't want that. Okay, so we're all set. I leveled these out there yesterday. All right, now, there's two knobs under here, and I'm going to bring it out here in a minute. Let me just lock that in. I'm going to bring it a little forward, a little bit more, not too much. Okay, and I'm going to unlock these knobs, and I'm going to take it, and you're going to see where it swivels up, out, I should say. Now, I'm not going to tighten them fully because I want to set up the crown stops. I'm going to loosen this knob here, all right, and you can see where this moves in and out. I want you to see these two tabs. Those two tabs are what go in there. But when I put this in, I always take these two tabs here, I align it, and it slides right in. Now, I could set this up. If I have a long piece of crown, I could set this up. And I'm going to talk about set, doing this. Okay? I could set it up and see how it stops it from going forward. Okay? And there's a way of setting this up. I'm going to show you a really, really pathetically easy way of doing this. Okay? <clears throat> so those are the crown stops, and I'll show you what they're for in a minute. I've always gone by this schematic. Big D just made it perfect for us. He put a little green in there. You got it? Where is it? To my left? Yep. Okay, so if you look at that, this is crown molding, and this is how it's up on the wall. Say, this is my wall, and you'll see it, and that's my ceiling. Now, this is a 3852, and you'll see that all the time. If you go, what do you mean 3852? <clears throat> the way I've always been taught is this here is the spring angle. It springs to the wall because that's how it goes. This little scotia here is at the bottom, and this goes to the ceiling. This is going to describe upside down and backwards in a few minutes. Okay, so that's your spring angle, and this is 38 here, and up top is 52. The corner, if you see it in the schematic, is 90, obviously, right? Well... <laughs> You would hope, okay? <laughs> so th hang on, Minnie. What is 52 plus 38? Oh, my God. Is she good at this stuff? Okay, and by the way, those aren't metric degrees. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Okay. See this right here? See how the flat's there and the flat's there? Okay, that's what you want when you set up. Okay? But here's the problem. What if I'm cutting a really small part? Look in between here and here. That's how you, what we call creating a nest because sometimes I'll cut returns or if I'm doing a column wrap, those are really small pieces. These are hanging out here and I can't go any further in. 
So we have to make what is known as a cut board, or that's what I call it, okay, a nesting board. And that can get confusing sometimes, and I'll show you why. <coughs> okay, when you get the crown stops, <coughs> you get this piece of paper in with the crown stops. See it? You can make your own nesting board. I know some people who just make a piece of uh, plywood across, and they don't make it fancy like this, but they can't read their scale here. The reason this has indents like this is so you can read your scale. Okay, guess what we do at Festool? We sell you one of these if you want, don't want to make your own template. What I've done over the years since we've had this, because here's the one you get when we, you buy it from somebody, you have this little notch in here. That helps you align it. But guess what I do? I took this as my template, and I think the week I got my first template, I think I made 50 of these. Because if I'm doing a job, I save this for that particular size crown. Okay? okay so I'm going to take a, a piece of crown upside down. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to take my cut board. I'm going to put it in here like this. I'm going to take my laser. And this is the beauty of the laser. I can get it right in the middle of where I want it. Okay? Now, here's where... I have found a trick over the years. Actually, I'm going to get a better piece of crown because that's got a little gunk on it. If I take the flat and the flat and I bring in my board like this, okay, like this, and then I bring this in like this and I tighten it. I'm going to lock it with a clamp in a minute. I'm kind of fiddle-faddling it with it, right? Okay, and then I, I go, it's a back and forth. I'll show you something really easy I learned. I always cut a small piece off like this and I take a measurement, okay? This is going to be my wall, and that's my ceiling. I'm going to take and put my flat and flat just like this. I'm going to hold it, and I'm going to scribe a line. I did already. See that? Okay. Yep. Now, here's something I'm going to show you. This is my run. The distance from here to here is known as my run. Okay. I am not if, – if, if the schematic you have from your molding dealer – shows you the run, that's not the true run you need to do this setup uh, rip I'm going to show you. I measure, what I'm doing is I'm measuring from here to here for my run. Okay, see? That's my rise. I'm sorry. That's my rise. I'm measuring from the outside to the wall. Okay? So if I take that and I make my measurement, which I did yesterday, from there to there, it's 73 millimeters or... Two and three, two and seven eighths. <laughs> I had to convert to me from metric, but I made a rip at two and seven eighths with my track saw at 73 millimeter. And look how much easier this is. Now, see this one here? This is the one I did with this cherry crown. I measured this one at 65. Okay? Because that was my run on that one to the outside lip of the molding. I can't stress that enough. Somebody showed me that. <laughs> quite a few years ago, and I was like blown away. I ripped that piece, 73, and look how much easier it is now. I don't even need this in here. I know that's going to be flat to flat. So I take it like this, and the only thing i got to really do is what? Get my center line there. I bring this in. Okay? I always make sure that crown stops back there because I don't want that in the way. I'm no longer really using this part of it. I'm using this part of it to hold it in line like this. Okay, nice and easy, and I'm going to lock it underneath, okay, both screws because you don't want this rotating on you. And then I'm going to take this one in. I'm still in the center, and I'll bring it in just like this and lock it underneath, okay? Whew, good. Now, I'm going to take a couple of clamps I have set up over here. Let me get that off, okay? And now I have this part here underneath to lock it in. And look how nice that is. Easy. If it's a we drill these out because if it's a wider crown, you can actually go through the hole. And I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight, nice and tight. Make sure it's locked in. There we go. I'm going to come over here and grab the other clamp. Whoopsie, and clamp it. Whew. And there we go. Now, if I just take that out, I'm going to set this over here, upside down and backwards. Look, flat and flat. See how that works, gang? 
absolutely perfect. And now if I got to cut small pieces, I'm cutting it here. So the first thing I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to cut my board because this will help you, really help you. I'm going to make sure I'm nice and stable. So there's one. I'm going to make my chop there. Oh. How's the audio, Derek? Good? Sounds yeah, good. Okay. That's how you set up your nest. It's that easy. Your crosscut capacity is 700 millimeters this way. You, it, okay, in Imperial, it's 27 and 9 sixteenths. Okay. I'm going to show you how to set it up this way. And when, if you have a track saw, you probably have the 1400 rail. Okay. So what I'm going to do is completely different than I showed you before. I'm automatically going to put this hinged uh, um, uh, FS rail connector part right here, but I'm going to feed it in here so it's this way. Okay, now I'm going to point this out every time I set up an MFT. I'm going to point out this knob and this knob because these are what anchor it to the MFT. This is vital. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it like this and I'm going to bring it in here like this and I'm going to slide it on. Now I've seen this all over YouTube, the internet, wherever. Okay, that people uh, have dogs, right? Okay, we have these dogs. They're part of our clamping elements. And they set up their MFT because we know that these are bored at perfect 90 grid. All right, but I'm going to use this. I want to show you this. This is MDF. This wears out over time. So I want you to see, look, there's wiggle room in here. And just about, you may get dogs out there, off-market dogs, that don't have a lot of wiggle room. Well, guess what? Over time, they will. Because MD they don't wear, the dogs don't wear, this wears. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to truly square this again today. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these dogs as a quick reference. And then, but I'm not going to guarantee it or I don't guarantee it square. All right, so come down here, Chris, so we get this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this knob right here because this knob anchors it to that loom extrusion and then I'm going to lock it down because that just holds that right there. I'm up against the dogs and I'm going to grab this piece right here. Woo! How's everybody doing today out there? Good? Got plans for the weekend? Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, so I'm going to slide this one in. Okay, and look, I'm going to bring it up against the dog. I'm going to make sure my pin is in there. Okay, and I'm going to lock it right here. See that? That's so important. And I'm going to lock it. So now it's not going to move. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up ever so slightly in the pin. I'm going to take these dogs out. And I'm going to grab my angle unit. Now on episode number five, MFT, you'll be able to see and go through the squaring process if I'm going too fast today. But I'm going to take this and anchor it here. But more important, see this knob? If you go into squaring it, look, there's movement in there. You're not going to have a square cut. So I always tighten that. I'm going to put my rail on just like this and I'm going to slide that right under there just like this and lock it in I'll take it down like this like this okay but always make sure that pin is in there and I press down there's no movement in here once you have weight on there okay let's you know, make sure you get yourself a good square all right and let's check this out I bring that tall tongue in there and I look at that okay now my eyes, and especially with this light, I don't like to use my eyes. I like to use post-it notes because post-it notes, I can guarantee that there's no movement in here, that that's tight there and that's tight there. Let's just check it out. See how that's tight and that's tight? So I know it's square. But if it wasn't, hopefully you remember this, everybody. I'm going to loosen it here. I'm going to make sure that that pin is down at 90 in that bottom of the detent I'll bring this over this is my rail clamp this is an imperative piece because you can have it all locked down but if you have deflection out here this eliminates the deflection of the fence okay so I'm tight and tight now I'm gonna loosen it here here I'm gonna grab that five millimeter wrench right here or hex key and you see these two right here I'm gonna loosen them up don't have to over loosen them. And look, I'm in zero. I press down. This is spring loaded. I press down so I'm at the very bottom. And then look at the movement I have at zero. And then I'll take it in and bring it in. 
Then I'll come back here and tighten it up and tighten it up. Yes, I have a lot of information in my head about Festool, and I can go on and on. I have on this tool, because I consider the MFT3 a tool, and I can go on and on on this. But let me boil it down to you. What's your maximum width of cut you're going to be cutting? And someone will go, huh? So one of, and I'm just going to undo the crown stop here, okay? And it's also about what trade are you in, if you're in a trade, okay? Um... I'm just going to get my crown stop off here really quick. I was just cutting some stuff this morning. Your capacity with the Capex at 90, cross-cut capacity, is, it's, it's simple. It's 12, uh, <laughs> we're in the States? Yes. Okay, 12 inches. <laughs> For everybody else around the world, it's 305 millimeter. That's at 90. By the way, that's just about every single saw I've used slide compound in my life. It's 12 inches, okay, or 305 millimeter. Now, I can give you another specification. At 45, it's basically 8 and a quarter. In other words, when I'm not getting that 12 inches here, when I turn it to 45, I'm actually getting what? 8 and a half, or 8 and a quarter, all right? Now, some might correct me, but I can look over here, and it's actually 210 millimeter. Okay, yes, I have a boatload of statistics up here because I want to hopefully guide you into your first, how do you say, delve into the Festool system. So someone will say, hey, what's the crosscut capacity? And I'm going to show you something really cool about the MFT3, okay? Because uh, when I first started messing around with the MFT3, I think it was in 2005, um, I was like, I was reading the catalog back then it was really small and I remember it said you get a, a 27 inch here in the states or 700 millimeter crosscut capacity on this so I was coming over here and I was going hmm and hopefully that's the big difference between it's it's your width of cut there's some other nuances I'll show you but look I'm not getting I'm getting 600 millimeters okay now someone uh, someone out there's probably correcting me and go well said you could connect them I showed you showed us how to connect them so you, yes, you can connect multifunction tables, and the only thing you have to do is get a longer rail, <laughs> right? Or what did I do that last MFT3 episode? I turned it around, and I used the rail that when you buy it as a package or the, the plus, you get a 1,400 rail, and you can use it in this configuration. So the width is a lot larger. You are, how do you say... Uh, narrowed into a 12-inch crosscut capacity at 90. So that might be the deciding factor. And this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to loosen it here. And that's why we have part of that extrusion there, because I can stand this up here, bring this in, and I get a little more movement back. And that's where you can achieve. And I'm still locking in and locking down. And Chris, get in here so we can see this. I'm getting a little over 700 millimeters when that's in the tall position, that tall fence. So remember that when you're doing that. But what if I need to and take this like this? And I've seen people do dangerous acts with a slide compound miner saw. They've taken stuff like this and held it and cut this. That is so dangerous. You see these lines right here? See them? See these two lines? And it says in between those two lines, don't put your hands. Okay, and it's really tough to clamp a piece like this. Where now, if you have the multifunction table, or you could just lay the rail down, you have a track saw, and I bl and no, I don't I don't believe I know that with the multifunction table plus the track saw, whichever one you choose. Okay, whether it's a fifty-five, seventy-five, or you know even the cordless version of the fifty-five, I can lay that on the line and make the cut. So there you go bring it in I got it lined up and I'm gonna lock it down okay now if we look over at the MFT3 Chris I'm gonna be there in a minute okay if we look over here that crown's not gonna happen I can't cut it nested so that's another reason are you cutting a lot or are you cutting base molding do you want to cut it in the position do you want to cut crown in the position we call it nesting 
you only have to remember only if it's an outside corner you only have to remember one it's a, at a 90 not a radius you have to remember one thing what is it everybody it's 45 degrees see how easy that is okay now there's what if I don't want to cut it nested <laughs> okay I don't have a tall fence here I don't have a way of setting up crown stops or what we call a nest you could cut it on the flat okay well that's okay and you can cut wider or taller crowns on this but that's why I came up and I said earlier what the 40 what the the, uh, the width of cut on the capex is at 45 it's like eight and a quarter okay or 210 millimeter <laughs> all right uh, well I'm gonna be cutting at two degrees or I'm gonna lay out a couple of degrees for you I can cut this crown molding someone says you can't cut crown molding on the MFT 3 heck you can because you have here in the degree I was set it on does anybody know when you're cutting crown flat if it's a perfect 90 is 31.6 that's your mitre your bevel on a perfect 90 outside corner is what it's 33.9 but everybody cheats it at 34 so I could set 34 degrees right on my track saw and set 31 point what point six right on here hey we can check it out because on here that's why on the capex we have look a 31 point six it's not a positive detent but there's your 31 point six right there so you can cut crown on the flat it doesn't have to be nested